Hi, and welcome to Culture Corner. In this piece, we were able to participate in a swordsmithing event at Minka-en outside of Fukushima City. This video shows the actual traditional practice of swordsmithing in Japan. Before we start, I want to tell you how rare it is to participate in an event like this in Japan. Swordsmithing is very heavily regulated by the Japanese government and is usually by invitation or special event only for public viewing. Most Japanese people don't see events like this as commonplace. One of the great things about the location is that Minka-en recently added a traditional Japanese forge to its attractions. Not only do they have a forge, it is used on a regular basis by master swordsmith Masahiro Fujiyasu. The process to becoming a swordsmith is very vigorous, requiring much of your time. The younger man here has only been learning for four years. His female counterpart has been training for one year. Like most traditional professions in Japan, watching in silence and being attentive to what the master is doing, saying, or not saying is very important. Let's start with some of the basics. The bellow used to stoke the fire to a high enough temperature is a wooden box with a pull handle. When the handle is pulled back, a flap opens up in the front. When the handle is pushed in, you hear a knock and the flap closes, forcing the air into the forge. The master gauges the fire and metal by sight. The colors coming from inside the forge tell him when it is right to pull the metal out or put it in. He had said because there wasn't a wall blocking the forge, the sunlight was making it difficult for him to gauge the temperature accurately. The master waits until the metal is red hot before he pulls it out of the fire. He rolls the metal in ash from rice stalks. When he places it on the anvil, he taps his hammer on the anvil. If the apprentice is off target, the master will tap the area on the hot metal, then indicate by tapping the anvil on how much power to use. This process is repeated over and over until the metal is flattened almost halfway. The next task is folding the metal. The master carefully uses an axe to split the piece along the center. The apprentice hits the axe in rhythm. The master bends it to a point where the apprentice can hit it and they fold it over completely. The next time they fold it in half, they fold it widthwise instead of lengthwise. They repeat this process until the master chooses to stop. He also uses a pot of clay as a way to help get rid of impurities in the metal. <laughs> when the shape of the sword comes to form, the apprentice's work is finished. The master slowly tempers the sword, making sure it is heated and cooled to the right temperature before shaping it. This process takes a majority of the time due to the meticulous task of maintaining the correct shape as well as squaring the blade. The master is constantly checking to see if the blade is square and straight with his T-square. Finally, after the shape is correct, the swordsmith will sharpen and polish the blade. This was not available at the event and usually is a long process itself. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Our friends over at Fukushima Guide helped us reserve a spot for this event. If you would like to participate, I'll leave their information below in the description. Thanks!